<laughs> now, you uh, were in a movie. It was in a movie. A big movie. Yes. A very big budget Hollywood movie. Johnny, I have been the sassy gay friend in a romantic comedy. I'm done. I get to walk away from Hollywood and say, <laughs> I won. I got the best thing that a gay guy can get out of this town. Drop the mic, give yep. him the double deuce, and see ya. Yes. I, I was in a movie called No Strings Attached with Natalie Portman and Ashton Kutcher. Well, let's just get rid of that first part. Let's just talk about the second part. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher. Okay. First of all, Natalie Portman is amazing and a delight. And okay. Super fun for a vegan. Um, <laughs> and uh, Ashton Kutcher, I saw one of his nuts and the tip of his dick. Standing uh, ovation for God's sake! Please tell me about, please tell me about uh, being on the set, Ashton's beauty, and the different parts of his body and how they come together. Okay, so he's like very like pale and looks like constantly as though he were dusted with baby powder. You know those guys who are so pretty that it looks like their hair should not be on their body? You're right. like, this looks like it's from a different thing. You should be like a hairless elf creature. Uh huh. He was kind of like that. And there was one scene where he sat across from me. He was like on a couch and I was on across from him. And he I know, I went to see this in the theater, so I know exactly what you mean. Thank you. <laughs> the residuals money I got for that meant a lot to me. Um, but he had like a little hand towel in front of his dick, and he was just not able to properly maintain, and I was like directly across from him, and got to see his junk periodically, and it was magical. It was the realization of so many dreams in my life. It was like the greatest job you could ever have gotten. And it was pretty fun. Wow. Now, what in that scene, he was supposed to, he was naked in front of you, right? Right. Like, but you know, it's the magic of, through the magic of movies, he had a small hand towel over his dick for some of it. Well. Yes. Part right. of the cock and a part of the ball was pretty good. It was pretty great. And how did it look? Did it look like it was like a thick beer can type situation or? No, I, like honestly, it looked like a long and thin operation. All right. Which works for some. I mean, he's a tall one. Yes. So, you know, it's tall and thin like his body. Yes. Oh, Lady Red. <laughs> Please get Lady Red's reaction to that. Wonderful. <laughs> Lady Red does not want to fuck Ashton Kutcher anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, me can have it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, but I have a good story about the premiere of that movie. Let me tell you the good oh, story please, of, from the please premiere. Please tell me. Okay, so I went to the premiere of the movie, and um, like, uh, Rumor Willis was like trying to like hit on some guy on behalf of her, her sister, and I was like, You have beautiful skin, let me help you. And so I was like, Wait, so wait, a guy was trying to hit on Rumor Willis? No, she was trying to get some guy to hit on her sister. Her scout. Yes. Uh, um, yes. Or the other one, Tallulah. I think it was Scout. Okay. The point is, is that she made me her pet homosexual for the evening. Oh. And like took me to a second location because she had some boy who she was trying to hit on. And we like got there and it was just like this gorgeous, muscly little twink. And I was just sort of like keeping other girls away. Um, and then <laughs> we like got into, we like got into the car after the club closed. Um, and we were driving back and this boy started freestyle rapping. And I was like, this is the cutest thing that I've ever seen. This is so fucking adorable. And he said, uh, I can freestyle rap about anything. Give me a topic. I can freestyle rap about anything. And so rumor said Scooby Doo. And then he freestyle rapped for five minutes, never once mentioning anything remotely related to Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized at that point, and at no point before then, that that might be Zac Efron. Like I had not, I like I was super fucking drunk because I'd like been to the premiere and then this other bar and then the club, and so I was shit faced. Um, and I was like, wow, I have to figure out, is this Zac Efron, is this Zac Efron? So when we got to the house, I was like, I just have three questions for you. And I was like, where do you live? And he was like, non-committal, he didn't say anything. And then I said, are, okay, because also I'm not unfamiliar with Zac Efron's Wikipedia entry. And so mm -hmm. I was like, all right, okay. are you half Jewish? And he said, well, it's my dad's dad, so I'm like a third Jewish. And I was like, that's Zac Efron. That's a kid who learned fractions on a soundstage. Wow. Yeah. And was it Zac Efron? It was totally fucking Zac Efron. He had just, he had booked up for that movie where he played, it was the Nicholas Sparks movie where he played like a military yeah. guy. Yeah. And so he had these guns. And it was like so crazy because, and also like he had a hat on the whole time we were at the club and so I couldn't see his hair. But it's like, he was, so, he was so sexually attractive, I couldn't be sexually attracted to uh -huh. him. Because it was Zac Efron, but like with 15 pounds of extra muscle. Whoa. So it was exactly what you want. Mm. Uh, and then at the, like, it was a 
like a rough evening where I had to keep Pat Benatar's daughter from having sex with him, so rumor could try, but it just all ended with me falling asleep on a couch next to Zac, Zac Efron. It was the best night of my life, and I should commit suicide, because it will never get better. Bravo, slow clap to standing ovation.